is a Trinidad and Eastern Caribbean representative of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. He's also the Black Agenda Project Director and author of Black Studies. Help me welcome our brother, David Mohammed. Greetings, Jamaica. I began in the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. I bear witness that there is but one creator. I greet you in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu Alaikum, which simply means peace be unto you. Beloved, I would like to get straight to the point and in honoring the great honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, I want to share with you a series of ideas in giving you in a very short space of time a crash course in black ideology so that we can tie together so many views and opinions and ideas and philosophies to present ourselves with a pathway forward for the kind of progress and productivity that is required. Beloved family, I will start with the great C.L.R. James, who said, in a revolution, when the accumulation of centuries and ceaseless activity all erupt in volcanic bursts and meteoric flares, it all means absolutely nothing but in finite romanticism and pure chaos unless we can connect the glory of those revolutions of the past with the mission and struggle of the present. He wrote this in the great book, The Black Jacobins, which he wrote about the Haitian Revolution. But in writing about the Haitian Revolution, which was just about the greatest revolution and rebellion that our people have ever experienced, it has been written out with the educational curriculum, but it has not been properly celebrated because the ideas have not been successfully passed on to our children. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, in a course on African philosophy, in three chapters, lesson number eight, was entitled, The Social System. Lesson number 12 was entitled, The Function of Institutions. And lesson number 20, was entitled, Our Purpose for Living. And in lesson number eight, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey explained that a society is set up in the best interests of the people who live there, and that rules, regulations, laws, and instructions are established to protect and preserve the heritage and legacy of those people. Then in the function of institutions, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey explained that no individual can do what an organization or an institution is set out to do, but we must have the right vision. And then in lesson 20, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey spoke about purpose for living and he said that whatever our goal in life is, it must be written of in advance as part of the educational curriculum so that we can train our children from their infancy stage into becoming the kind of great individuals that we know that they can become. So when we look around the Caribbean today or the African diaspora and all of the black communities, we are seeing a failure of our people because we have not properly connected the wisdom and intelligences and the ideologies and philosophies of the past to today. And my question would be that if the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey were with us today in Jamaica in the year 2018. Where would he be? What would he be doing? What would he be saying and teaching? And I am of the view that if the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey were here in Jamaica today, he would definitely be sending his message to the young black men who are in gang warfare against each other, shedding and spilling each other's blood, because it's the teachings of Marcus Garvey that can rescue us from a self-hatred and a self-destruction. If we are asking where is the black man's army and the black man's supermarkets and the black man's businesses, then why can't we appeal to our brothers in the gangs on the street level in particular who are training those guns on one another, get them to come together, form a security company, then they offer their services and get paid and then with that money they take it and open a supermarket. Once we open a supermarket and we expand more, then maybe we can open a transportation company. But if we're thinking in 2018 with the 1887 mentality, 
when we have new problems and challenges today, that we are failing Marcus Garvey by not bringing his wisdom and intelligence back into this here and now, this being present. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is the teacher of my teacher, Minister Louis Farrakhan, and also the teacher of Malcolm X, spoke about education for our black youth, and he said, if we have 13 million black people who eat one slice of bread per day, that means we eat 90 million slices of bread with three meals a day, which is 630 million slices of bread per week, which is 37 million 760,000 slices of bread per year. Then we write in the mathematics textbooks for the children to calculate how much land do we need to have under wheat cultivation so that we can provide the daily bread for all black people, not just some black people, because that's all of us who are in this together. We're a united African people. And it was the great Kwame Touré who formed the AAPRP, which is the All African People's Revolutionary Party, and not the Some African People's Revolutionary Party. But some of us in organizations think that we're in a competition with each other. And so we push one another out and pull each other back and want to fight against each other for spotlights and sponsorship. But it is every single African in the Caribbean, every single African in the diaspora, every single African on the African continent that has to come together on the basis of what we have in common as one people with one God, one aim, and one destiny. All praise is due to God. Beloved, I want us to think for a very brief moment about the great Dr. Martin Luther King and how our enemies have represented him to us as if our number one goal as black people was to integrate ourselves with white people. When in the last few days of Dr. Martin Luther King, in his last speech the day before he died on April the 3rd, 1968, Dr. King's topic was black retaliation against the forces of white wickedness through the power of economic withdrawal. And only towards the end of his career, Dr. Martin Luther King started to call on African people to boycott white institutions and to spend our money with one another. And then Dr. King quoted Hugo Victor saying, that if a people are left in darkness, sin will be committed. But the guilty one is not he who commits the sin, the guilty one is he who created the darkness. And it is white society that has created the darkness that black people are now finding themselves packed into prisons in. And it is that pain and suffering created by white society that we're still experiencing in colonialism up to 2018. So we have available to us enough knowledge, wisdom, and understanding as a people to take out of it all of the greatest value and teachings and produce some kind of new, great, and magnificent philosophy. In Kwame Ture's book, chapter one of the book, Black Power, is entitled White Power. Chapter two of the book, Black Power, is entitled Black Power. And in the chapter on white power, they said you cannot even have white power unless you get some black people to join onto the agenda of white power and then come among us as politicians, as members of parliament, as mayors, as prime ministers, as governor generals and continue to oppress us in the same way that we were oppressed formerly by an enemy. So my beloved, as I begin to conclude, it is African philosophy also from the continent that we have to link and connect with the black ideology that came up out of the Western Hemisphere. For it was His Imperial Majesty, Emperor of Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, who said, throughout history, it has been the inaction of those who should have taken action, the indifference of those who should have known better, and the silence of the voice that should have spoken out when it matters the most, that allow evil to continue to reign. And the evil that continues to reign in our community is now being done by our own hands. And this is why Jomo Kenyatta said, African solidarity can no longer be a dream, it can no longer be a vision, it has to be a decision. 
we have to decide to settle all of our differences, whether we're Muslims or Christians or Pan-Africanists or Baptists or Rastafarian or whatever religion or political party or culture we may come from, whatever our nationality is, African people all across the Caribbean have to unite as one African diaspora, as the seventh region of the African continent itself. And if we fail in this mission, then we will be failing our children. The great Kwame Nkrumah, president of the first independent African nation said, revolutions are brought about by men who think as men of action and by men who act as men of thought. Because from a thought comes an action, from an action comes a habit, from a habit comes a character, and from a character comes a destiny, but it all begins with the way that we think. And beloved, I leave you with this. It was the great Patrice Lumumba who said that the white man, when he came to Africa, he had the Bible and we had the land. He taught us to pray with our eyes closed. And then when we opened back our eyes after our prayer, we had the Bible and he had the land. And the same thing applies to the politician. Think as I leave you with this. When the politician came into our community, we had the power and he had the politics. He taught us to think with our minds closed. And when we opened back up our minds, we now had the politics, which is the flag, the symbol, the hat, the t-shirt, the badge, the bullhorn, the symbol, the banner that we put up. And he has the power when we are supposed to still have the power even after we vote for him. So that is part of the discussion that they've tricked us with. And so it is absolutely essential as I leave you that we pass on all of these great teachings to our children from the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Haile Selassie, C.R. James, Henry Professor Williams, George Padmore to Kwame Nkrumah, Leonard Jeffries, Yusuf Ben Yakin and John Henry Clark and every single black teacher, scholar and historian that was among us. And it is for this reason that we publish this book with all of those black philosophers and ideologies in one book, with a curriculum, a syllabus, to facilitate the teaching and learning process. And as I close, I say to us, and to our beautiful, beloved sister, who gave us such a beautiful speech, that in Trinidad, three years ago, we had the same idea that our beloved sister spoke about. The first thing that we have to do is talk. And we have to talk to one another because we have to have a skills bank and think tank. And we came together and we acquired three quarters of an acre of land from the state. In the same way that Marcus Garvey is not properly honored by the governments of Jamaica. In the same way, Kwame Toure, formerly Sonny Michael, who popularized the phrase black power, who was born in Trinidad, has never been honored by any government of Trinidad. They never built a school named after him. They never built a road or a street or a highway named after him. No monument or statue or institution in Trinidad was ever built in honor of Kwame Toure. So we, as followers of Minister Louis Farrakhan, inspired by the consciousness and the wisdom of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, of Marcus Garvey, of C.L.R. James, of Dr. Eric Williams, we, with our own hands, pulled our money together with not one single cent from the government or corporate, just moving across the nation, across the Caribbean, sharing this kind of black consciousness, we started to collect money. And on this year, we're not talking about a dream or an idea or a vision. We're talking about this year gone on African Liberation Day, May 26, 2018. We opened a 6,000 square foot building that is called the Kwame Toure Education Center in Progress Bay, Florida. And we did it with the love of black people. We did it with the desire to see our children have a conscious education where they will no longer be the burden bearers and modern day slaves of the 21st century, but to give them an opportunity of the vision for them to know by incorporating it in the education curriculum and syllabus that it was African people who gave civilization to the world. The first schools were in Africa. The first libraries were in Africa. The first colleges and institutions were all in Africa. African people gave the world science, mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, anthropology, architecture, 
and all different types of wisdom. We built all different types of learning institutions from Timbuktu all the way up to Cairo. And how dare we have our children in these modern government schools and they are learning about European supremacy and superiority, but they're not learning their own black history, which is a must. So I say, let us all partner across the Caribbean with these kinds of objectives. I want to thank Sister Kabu for being a beacon of light and consciousness on the radio in Jamaica and all over the Caribbean. We need much more than a big But let's network with one another, let's work together. It's not just Trinidad and Jamaica, but it's Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, and everywhere in between. Let us unite and pool our resources and appeal to our governments so that we can build these kinds of institutions. It's easy to do. All we have to do is love one another. I want to salute my brother Clive Mohammed, who is a great teacher of this same kind of wisdom. Every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock in Portmore, I want to salute my beloved brother Muta Baruka for also being a beacon of light through entertainment and wisdom. And I say to all of you, Thank you for receiving me as your brother from Trinidad. I thank you so much. I look forward to being with you again. And I say, may Almighty God continue to bless you as I greet you in peace. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Good can only be destroyed by yourself from within and not from without. You have reached the point where the victory is to be won from within and can only be lost from within. Marcus Messiah Gavi. The program is going and we are having a celebratory kind of thing in this here courtyard. If you look outside, I wish they could, oh, the listeners, I wish you could see outside what it is. 